Marjorie Broussard, I'm the president of the NAACP here in the city of Lafayette. I'm also the vice president uh, for the state uh, for District D, which includes Lafayette, Louisiana. We just came to a press conference and was escorted out and we came to the press conference because our elected officials, the people who uh, we pay our tax dollars to, were making statements about something that we were involved in, very involved in, today. And we were escorted out because they told us that the mayor said that this was a private press conference. Okay, so we want the mayor to know that we are definitely going to address him tomorrow at five o'clock at City Hall. Uh, we are not like other communities. We are a lot worse than other communities when it comes to race relations because our mayor, I'll say it, our mayor is racist. Everything that he has done since he's been in office has impacted the African American community negatively. And it's time for this to stop. Mark Garber has, has uh, help me out somebody. Militarized. Uh, mili uh, militarized. militarized our, our, uh, the sheriff department, and today we heard what he said. He threatened us. We don't want Mark Garber's militarized uh, sheriff department in our communities. We can care less of what he thinks. He, we can care less what Mark Garber thinks and what he's and, the, and his threat. And tell him he he too can meet us tomorrow at City Hall. All citizens who stand for justice, we want you to come out tomorrow at five o'clock at City Hall, and we're going to address our mayor, our mayor, our, our mayor Josh Guillory. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jamal. Folks, I, what I heard today was dog whistling, right? Like this, just racist behavior from a mayor president who takes his calls from Donald Trump. This is a national issue that has trickled down to Lafayette and we didn't invite it here. It was here already. Donald Trump gave him permission to be reckless with the sheriff. I would, I would echo the sentiment of Mrs. Broussard that we will not be scared or intimidated by someone with a uniform and a gun. They've killed plenty of us. They've cracked people's head up open on the Edmund Pettus, Pettus Bridge and they still crossed it. We will not tolerate or go quietly into the night for a mayor president his sheriff, his chief of police, who are hiding up there and refusing to meet the people. We pay your salary. Come and meet us at City Hall tomorrow. We haven't set anything on fire, and I challenge each of you to go look on Facebook because I just posted a video of who was really setting things on fire. We have to look and be very careful of the bad actors that come into these situations and start crap. The NAACP, the people here, weren't part of that. We weren't blocking traffic. However, however, what we will not tolerate is this de demonization of people of color that came together to celebrate the life of a man who was gunned down with his back turned. And we didn't even have the very basic decency to mention his mother in the press release. They got some people that's low. Josh Giller is lower than a dog for that. Amen. We ain't got time for this, folks. Lafayette needs to do better. Come tomorrow. Insofar as I'm concerned, we need a recall petition. Yes. Uh, for Bill over uh, the last 12 years or so, we've been fighting uh, for better policing in Lafayette. We have been uh, requesting that that all law enforcement agencies within this jurisdiction of Lafayette Parish or the Greater Lafayette area look at the 21st policing recommendation or guidelines that have been established by the Obama administration. We, we need an analysis to find out what are we doing different that, that can be done better. Because we know that as long as our people are getting killed, what good is it to have people who are serve and protect, and when you serve and protect, and somebody gets killed? When a lot of times there's a dispute, and no police shows up, and nobody dies. So this is something obviously wrong with our process. Now, we know that our policing practices in the United States were based on slavery traditions, which in most communities, when the slaves were free, they created a police force to chase after the runaway slaves or the free slaves to keep them in control. And our current policing policies and practices do not, are not much far removed from that. That's why we see mass incarceration of black people. That's why we see disproportionate uh, killing of black people by police, police officers. When 80% of your investigatory, uh, uh, investigatory assets go into one segment of the community, which might be less than 20% of your community, 80% of the money goes in the community where black people live. Who are you going to catch? Who are you going to put in jail disproportionately? Who are you going to kill disproportionately? Right. And when everybody looks at this video, like I did, who can justify the need 
for lethal force in the manner that it was delivered. To, 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 to try a man, to find him guilty, and to execute him without any process of law. That's what happened there last night. Right. That mother, right. that family did not deserve that, and young Pellerin did not deserve that as well. But we've seen it happen too many times. We've seen it happen over and over and over. And yet they think that it's going to fade away. Right. Uh, it's a hoax. It's going to go away. It's not going to happen. There will be a sustained movement in Lafayette. And either the leaders that we have elected now or in place now will come to recognize that we as a community want, we're not trying to fight anybody. We elected people to do their job. Otherwise, we'd go to bed at night at a decent time rather than being out here trying to fight for justice. But we will not be, we will not stop. We'll be really, our, our, our coalitions are building all across this community. There are a lot of people now who understand. And to our white community especially, all of the, all of the rallies we did all summer long, Black Lives Matter rallies, so many new people, new friends that I have who brought that sign that said, white silence is white violence. Now is the time that we need to stand with us. Stand with the black community because the problem with policing is not just a black problem. It's going to be a community-wide problem right. or is a community-wide problem. Yes. Thank Devon. you very much, Press, for being here. Devon. Tonight, I would like to say thank you, of course, for those that recognize that no, it was not the NAACP that incited any of the, uh, the events that took place after the event. But what I was saddened by was that the administration did not even acknowledge that the reason why these events took place was because of the climate they created. Right. What I was saddened by was that the administration didn't even have the, 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 the compassion or the heart to send their condolences to the mother and the family of this young man. Whether, no matter what the situation turns out to be, somebody lost their life last night. That's right. Some, a man died last night. A man was murdered last night. The fire chief did and, send and, and out the, his yes, condolences. Yes, the fire, I'm, let me be specific. The mayor president, our leader of this city and of this parish did not give his condolences to the family. And that saddens my heart. So what we have is a movement of people. And usually what happens sometimes in, in that movement is that people, some people may not, be, may not be able to be maintained within the movement because of their frustration, because of their pain, and because of their anger. That does not justify any illegal acts. But the question that I must ask, and what we have been fighting for for the last three months, is to get under the roots of these problems. And so what I must ask is that the, the president, the mayor president, the parish council must have a reckoning with themselves on tonight and ask themselves the question, are the streets of Lafayette safer tonight or are they less safe because of my leadership? And I will say this, we are not looking to harm anybody. We are not looking to hurt anybody. We are looking for justice. We are looking for peace and equality. But it, is, it baffles me how these administrations will protect these buildings, they will protect their integrity and how they look on the national stage before they protect and preserve life. Josh Guillory is more concerned about being recognized by Donald Trump and by trying to push some law and order um, specialty here in Lafayette so he can be looked at by him than actually protecting and preserving life in this city. So I would ask again that the community remember this is not a moment, it is a movement, and in order for the movement to happen, we need you to, to show up and show out every day. And, and I just want to point out that our sheriff, oh, on some, is, that is that Garvin? Yes, it is. We got people walking out the back door, they, don't, they can't even face, as officers of the law, the people that they are sworn to protect and serve. I mean, they are going out the back door, folks. They are safe. They can kill somebody that looks like us, and sleep well at night and call us, they, they, they will make us out to be something that we're not. Lafayette is better than this. This is our bridge crossing moment in Lafayette. Be ready to cross the Edmund Pettus. We ready for some good trouble. Yeah. Any questions, guys? I just have one question. What would be your message to the people from the outside that came in and maybe did start these fires and maybe did cause the trouble that they are uh, talking about? You guys want to Yeah, I mean, go to the back. Go back to the hell where you came from. We don't want it in this city. We can handle our own. We got this. You, they picked the wrong city to do this in. Go back where you came from. The people here, the coalition that we have built, is prepared to handle the business we need to handle. And so if you're one of these bad actors that comes in and sets fires and throws rocks and pops firecrackers, you're not welcome here in Lafayette. 
that's not the stuff that we're doing. Let's be clear, our people are, are in, more in danger when this happens. So again, these are, this is not our people doing this. Let's be very clear. These are people who have been paid. I'm not gonna say by who, I won't specify. Y'all know who it is. These are people who have been paid and set up to cause this to make us look a certain way in order to fit the narrative that will go out across the world. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? I wanna thank you guys for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. See us, see us tomorrow at five o'clock. Please come City to my Hall. Five City, Hall. City Hall. And my name is Marjorie Bruchard, and I pre I approve all these messages. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor. Did they take us live? Oh, Close the loop real quick. Can we? Yeah. All right. Well,